importance of a positive confession. Amen. Too many Christians, I'm going to just say it, too many Christians, their words don't align, align with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We all know them. Come on, we all know people that you, you hear them talking, and if you should think, wow, that's not what the Bible says. Amen? That's not what the Bible says. But in Hebrews 20, uh, chapter 10, verse 23, we looked at this at the opening last week. It says, let us hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast with a grip that leaves a mark. That's what that means. Hold fast with a grip that leaves, leaves a mark of the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. This morning we're going to talk about uh, an example in the Old Testament if you look forward in your notes a little bit further, in the Old Testament, the, the importance of, the, of, of agreeing with God and his word. Amen? There's power in agreement. And in Matthew chapter 18, it says, If two of you agree, touching any one thing, asking, he says, it might be done by my Father in heaven. No, it says it will be done. So there's power in agreement with God's word. Amen? There's power in agreement with God's word. And the word confession is the word homologio, and it means, is this in your notes? To say the same thing, to be in unanimous, and to parrot somebody. Now, I heard, a, um, just so happens, I heard a guy say this week that he, a pastor, he said, I was standing in a, in a family's house as I was preaching revival, and uh, all of a sudden in the morning, before everybody was up, I heard the phone ring. And uh, he said it rang over and over. And he's thinking, oh, my God, isn't anybody going to answer that phone? You know where I'm going with this. Isn't anybody going to answer this phone? And so he got up and went out to the, and looked at his phone. The phone's not ringing. And he looked around the room, and over here, what he thinks over there is a parrot. Now, there's some people in here that can relate to this. He said this parrot sounds just like the phone over and over and over and unfortunately, uh, that's the way with a lot of Christians, they want to parrot somebody else. Matter of fact, that when I, the very first message I ever spoke in, in Croydon uh, on a Sunday night, I was as nervous as Ellen would be if she would stand up here. <laughs> and uh, so I, I preached um, Kenneth Hagin's message on faith. I know, you're, what's the word for it? You're taking somebody else's word, but plagiarizing. But then I heard, I don't know how many preachers say, if you want to use this in your sermon, go ahead and use it. And uh, Kenneth Copeland himself said, I preach Papa Hagen's sermons all the time. So anyhow, that, that's what, uh, and I was, I was parroting Kenneth Hagen Sr. So anyhow, it, uh, but, but we're not just parroting somebody else's word when we say God's word because God's word is truth, amen? God's word is truth. So they, they, be, they need to become our words. They need to be in our hearts and not just something we say out of our mouth. That's why when we repeat things in here, we don't repeat them just to sound good or sound religious because a lot of times people sound religious what they say. But if you pay attention... If you pay attention, what they're saying is maybe uh, half scriptures or, or not, not, well, that's not exactly what the Bible says, but that sounds really good. It sounds real religious. So um, it has to be a conviction of our heart and in agreement with what God says. Amen? That's why, you know, when we, when we prayed earlier, we just prayed what the Bible says, Jesus' name. You know, that's what uh, Peter said, but... But uh, we come in agreement with God's word, uh, uh, and we don't waver. That's the thing about uh, our, our confession. Sometimes we, we waver in what we say, or we waver after we say it, uh, we, we, we waver in other ways. Uh, uh, we, we, what we don't do is, is, what we shouldn't do is give in to others' opinions. Everybody has an opinion, amen? Everybody has an opinion. And you know what? P opinions are like armpits. Eventually, they're going to stink. But we, we have to, there's only one opinion that we need. Amen? Amen? Only one opinion. That's the word 
of Almighty God. Amen. James 1.8 says, talks about um, a double-minded person. Amen. A double-minded, he's one that wavers, is unstable, and, and all he does. And, and James says, let him not think that he'll get anything from God. That's somebody that, that what's the, speaks out of both sides of their mouth. Amen. Speaks out uh, today, uh, that, that, and their life is, is a lifestyle of compromise. Amen. And, and the, th the thing with them is, uh, um, today I'm around a bunch of Christians, so I speak what? Christianese. Come on, I've been there. I've been there. I've done that. Bought that t-shirt. Had it on my back. Anyhow, uh, the next day at work, come on, you, you've been there. Come on, I've been there too. I worked in a factory. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ignorant of what goes on or what's said, but the next day at work, you know, we were, were pulled back into our, I know, listen, I know that doesn't happen to any of you anymore. You're, you're all, what does Dr. Wood say, pious Pete and saintly Susans. That's what he used to say. But, um, you know, our friends and our family have a way, don't they, of pulling us back, and, and, like raising the old man from the dead. Amen? Let me, let me tell you, and I'm being honest here, my brothers or whoever are watching, they know where I stand. And you know what? They tell me that. And how much they appreciate that I don't, you know, they ain't gonna, they just know who, who I am. And our, our family and our friends should see that in us, amen? That, uh, that we're not compromising truth just to give in to some fleshly desire or whatever, whatever. Um, uh, why is it important to confess and agree with God's word? Because verse 23, look at it, it says, He who promised is faithful. Amen? He's faithful. He's a faithful God. Amen? His, he, his, his assuring God. He's, he's a, a God that, that when he says something, it's going to come to pass. Amen? Amen? Uh, the word I saw this week was synchronized. That's my new word, synchronized. If you watch the Olympics, the uh, swimming, that's amazing, isn't it? How they do that. And, and the other thing is uh, synchronized diving. I mean, if they would just jump off and jump in all together, but they do it, you know, it's just, just amazing. But, but our words have to synchronize with God's word. That's my new word for the day synchronized but in numbers chapter 13 are you numbers 13 i think that's uh, underlined if you if it's uh, underlined that's where we're going to go next numbers chapter 13 we're going to look at an example there's many many examples in the bible of men and women of god that agreed with god when he said something and those who didn't agree with God and what happened in their lives. But if, we all know the number, a story in Numbers 13 where the 12 spies were sent out and we've probably, probably heard a half a dozen sermons on Numbers chapter 13. But, but let's look at it at a, at a different angle. I've always heard this and even preached that this is a great faith message. But let's look at this in a different angle. But uh, let's look at... Uh, uh, Numbers 13, verse 1 and 2 real quick. Uh, faith, faith, it is a faith message, but faith agrees with God. Amen? And when you agree with that, faith agrees with God. But look at verse 1 and 2. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send, me, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which what? I am giving. Is, is that, that God speaking? I'm going to give you this. I am giving to the children of Israel from each tribe of their fathers. You shall send a man, every one a leader among them. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But this, this I am giving, that's a promise. If, if, if God said it, don't you think they would grab a hold of that and agree with that and say, God, if you're giving it, I'm going to go for it 110%. Amen? Um, uh, that was the promise, uh, to bring them out of bondage into the promised land. I mean, I, I think I read that somewhere, didn't I? 
where that, that's the promise. They were gonna, he was going to bring them out into the promised land. But look at verse 2. It says, everyone a leader. Everyone. Now, we all have probably different conception of what a leader is, but a leader is a person of influence and a person of faith. Now, you could say, well, he's a person of character and many other things you could list, but, but uh, to me, a leader is a person of influence and a person of faith. Um, but we'll, we'll see about that, won't we? Because he said, everyone a leader among them. In other words, these are people out of the 12 tribes that the people trusted would do and say the right things. Amen? So we see what a leader is. So they went out, verse 17 through 22. Well, we're not going to take the time to read them, but, but they went out and they saw. And, in, and verse 20 says, uh, be of good courage. And uh, so they saw what, was gonna, what they were walking into. It's not like they were walking into it blindly. God says, go spy it out. Go see what I'm giving you. Amen. He thought, I'm sure in God's mind, he thought when they see this, boy, they're going to be really excited. They're going to be really excited. So they saw the land, verse 23 and 24, says uh, they came to the valley of Eskol and cut down a branch. You see, read it there for yourself, and uh, clustered with a man. They had to carry it on poles and the figs and all that. So, um, so they, they went out and they, they saw they saw what the future held, amen? They saw what the future held for them. Verse 27 says, Then they told him and said, we went, out, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. So they, they went out, and they, they saw, and, and can you imagine the excitement? Now, maybe we can't because we can't picture in our mind's eye fruit that big that we'd have to carry it on a stick over our shoulders. But can you imagine the excitement? So they went back and they said, man, this is it. We're going to go for it. We're, we don't care what it looks like. We're going to... No, they didn't say that, did they? They didn't say that. But look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. Nevertheless, never, nevertheless to me means... Uh, in spite of what things look like, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, who was a giant. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jezebites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. What happened here? What happened here? Doubt spoke first. This is what I saw, and it's actually I've been written in my Bible. Doubt spoke first. Doubt spoke first. Um, I have um, I heard this saying that um, it goes, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Did you ever hear that? Well, I was, I was writing this out. The Lord said, show me your leaders, and I'll show you your future. Show me your leader, show me your shepherd, show me your pastor, show me your, your overseer, and I'll show you your future. Amen. As, a, as your leader, a man of faith, a woman of faith, a lot of people don't like that. Well, you can't have a woman up front. But uh, uh, show me your leader, and I'll show you your future. Are they agreeing with, with what God's word says? Are they preaching, thus saith the Lord? Are they preaching like this... I almost said the denomination. I've got to be careful. He showed me his Bible. He said, Tim, they won't let me preach certain things. No, that can't be. No, let me show you. So he had things blacked out of his Bible. Well, that's not good. That's not good. But um, so, so I have my Bible, doubt spoke first. My, my question to myself was, what if faith would have spoke first? Would the people have believed Thus saith the Lord, instead of one man's opinion. Numbers 32, 8 says they became very discouraged. When they heard this report, I'm sure they were all gathered around waiting to hear, and they probably saw, don't you think they saw the fruit? They saw what was in the promised land. They, they, they probably in their minds, I thought, wow, this is going to be really good. But then 
doubt spoke up, discouragement spoke up, and everybody got discouraged. And if we read that later on, everybody got discouraged. Now remember in Joshua, you probably do too, God told Joshua in Joshua 1.8, be strong and very courageous. And over and over, God says, be very, very courageous. Remember, he kept saying, be very, because God knew what Joshua was going to go through. So he kept, and these people probably heard that. So he said, be very courageous, because he knew, and he knows what we're going to do. Because a lot of times, faith takes courage, doesn't it? I mean, you go buy a hundred and twenty-some thousand dollar farm with no money. <laughs> Some people said, no, I won't say what they said. No, I better not go there. Anyhow, because um, faith takes courage and faith takes a, 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 to step out. Amen? Because if you say you're in faith but don't step out, uh, you're really not in faith because faith steps out and does the impossible, does what other people say can't be done. Amen? So these people didn't, they heard doubt, they heard discouragement, they heard everything negative, even though they saw in front of them the fruits of what they were walking into, what was told to them by their leaders wasn't faith, it was doubt. It was discouragement. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, amen? So what they were going to do wasn't through their own might, it was through God's might, because God has promised, and what God is faithful, amen? So look at verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Isn't that interesting? Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are what? Well able to overcome. We are well able. So faith spoke second. But the doubt and discouragement was so overwhelming that even this, this mighty man of faith couldn't, couldn't change their minds. But God said, I am giving. And even though they saw the giants, they compared their giants to their God. Instead of, instead of comparing God to their giants, Amen. God is greater than any giant in our life. Amen. Amen. And, and, and a lot of times, come on, I've been there. I've been there that the giants come into my life and, and uh, it looks overwhelming. Even if physical, it's overwhelming. But, you know, I, 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 I'm there right now in parts of my body. It's like, Man, God, how many of you said, God, this is it's getting a little old. Amen. This is getting a little old. But God is faithful. Amen. We have to keep reminding ourselves and speaking that, that God, you're faithful. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it looks like. God, you're faithful. But he said, he said, let's go up at once. In other words, stop rolling around. How many of you do that beside roll around your mind? You, oh, well, maybe I should do this. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe it looks bigger than what I thought. Maybe it is this. Maybe it is that. Oh, maybe it's this. Come on. <laughs> You've been there, done that? Amen. But he said, let's go up at once. In other words, before you start rolling this around in your mind, let's do it. And you know what? Jesus had this example. Jesus had this example. Remember the story where uh, it's in Mark chapter 8, where the disciples couldn't cast this demon out of this boy. And Jesus came on the scene and uh, this, this man came up to him and said, can you help me, to paraphrase it. And Jesus said, all things are possible to those who believe. He didn't say, sure, I'll do it, or whatever, but he said, all things are possible to those who believe. So what happened? What happened? The rest of the story is, Jesus, the, the man said, help my unbelief, Jesus, it doesn't say this, but immediately, the Bible says, he cast the demon out of this boy at once. He, because why? Because he saw, the, the Bible says, he saw the crowd coming to him. He saw what was going to happen. All of a sudden, he saw that this man, instead of walking in faith, was going to give in to the crowd who saw the disciples couldn't do anything, and they were in this 
you know, disagreement and everything else, but Jesus saw this was going to happen and immediately cast the demon out of that boy. So, the, so, so uh, Caleb said, let us go up and take possession immediately. Let's go up at once. But they didn't do it. They, did it. they, they just didn't do it. Fear and discouragement was settling in, wasn't it? Fear and discouragement was settling in. But these, these ten other men of faith and power and of leadership didn't agree with God's word. Didn't agree with, with God. God said it. That should have been it. Amen? That should have been it. But look at verse 31 through 33. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Well, was that true? That, that was true. Come on, physically, that was true. I'm talking in the physical realm now. That was true. Even giants were there, except if you're David. David didn't care how big Goliath was. You know, he knew the power of his God. But um, he said, and they gave the children of Israel what? A bad report. Ever been there? That from the doctor, you get the bad report? Or somebody else, you get a bad report. Look what it says. A bad report of the land which they had spied out. Now that's not true because they had physical evidence of the fruit and what was in the land. The land through which they had gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Well, they, never, they didn't see that. See how they're sort of making up things to, to agree with their their disagreement or their bad report. They're making things up here. Uh, all the people whom we saw in the, are men of great stature. Now that is true. That is true. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came, like the, came, from grass, came from giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. You see that? In our own sight. And so we were in their sight. They, they, I, I have this written in my Bible. It's called grasshopper complex. It's when you see yourself smaller than the opposition that's coming against you. It's when you see yourself not good enough. And then, well, I'm just not good enough. Or I'm just not strong enough. Or I'm just not smart enough. Or I, no, those are the things I used to say. But um, maybe not you. But, um, but we, we fail to remember when those things happen, we fail to remember the goodness of God and the greatness of our God. And he is, he has already made us what? Overcomers in Christ. Amen. Amen. So they didn't see themselves as overcomers or the promise of God working through them. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. Isn't that what they said? In our own sight. That's how they saw themselves. Instead of saying and believing, remember they saw how many miracles and signs and wonders in the desert which God give, did for them. Instead of remembering that, instead of remembering that, they, they forgot all about that and said, you know what, we just can't do this. We just can't do this. They didn't declare or confess, like the Bible says, the goodness of God, the promises of God. That every promise of God is what? Yes and amen. You know, we, we have now, and you know what the thing is? We have right in front of us the promises of God. That we can do all things through Christ. Amen? Who gives us strength. We can do this. We are greater. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Amen? David said to Goliath, you know, who is this uncircumcised? He wasn't even of faith. He wasn't even a Jew. Who is this guy that's not even in our faith? Amen? He, David knew God's greatness. David knew God's goodness. Dave, in spite of the size of the giant, David knew that he was already an overcomer. Amen? And that's who we have to see ourselves as and speak it forth out of our life. So is victory con connected to our confession? It absolutely is. Because look what happened with these people when they didn't confess that God is greater than these giants. The Bible says that they didn't enter in. And we all know that. Everybody 20 years of age and over 
didn't enter into the promised land. So they, is our victory connected to our confession? It is. But victory is also connected to our obedience. Amen? We can say one thing and do another thing. Uh, not you. That's not, that's not you guys. You don't, I know you don't do that. But when, if your yes has to be yes and your no has to be no. Amen? When we're, when we're confessing God's word and then the next day confessing something else, the Bible says, we talked, and it's in James, you're a double-minded man. I didn't, I'm, I didn't say that. That's what the Bible says. Amen? We have to agree and, and come into synchronization Come on, this should be your new word. Synchronization with God's word, amen? So our victory is connected to our confession and our obedience, amen? Look at chapter 14. We're going to finish up here. Look at chapter 14. So all the congregation, all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. The people wept that night. They were so upset. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Oh my gosh. 430 years they cried out to be delivered. Finally they were delivered. And now they want to go back to eating leek burgers and all that other stuff. But um, if we only had died in the land of Egypt, if only we had died in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? What Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now, think about this. Return to bondage. Return to where they were. And by the way, all the people that held them in bondage were now dead. Amen? Didn't they die when the river... Come on, maybe you don't know the story about Moses and this, anyhow, they were all dead. What were they going to return to? It just, it just blows my mind. So they said to one another in verse 4, let us select a leader. <laughs> Come on, let us, let us select a leader and return to bondage. I mean, return to Egypt. Come on, how much sense does that make? Think about this. They wanted to, re, they wanted to select another leader of doubt, of, of unbelief, all the things that you can name. They wanted, to, they wanted to go back into bondage instead of agreeing with God's word that God is faithful, amen. Caleb, Moses, and Aaron couldn't change their mind. They saw the giants bigger than their God and died in the wilderness. So is our victory connected to our confession? Well, here's a good example they didn't enter the promised land because they refused to agree with thus saith the Lord. Amen? They have refused to agree with thus saith the Lord. Look at verse 9 real quick. It says, Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. So one more time, one more time, they tried to convince them, look, look what he said. We are overcomers. We're going to win this. This is no problem for our God. But they didn't. And the congregation said, stone them with stones. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? God brought them through the desert, water out of the rock, manna, and all the other stuff and they rebelled against God. So 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So when think about this. Now think about this other aspect. All this negativity, where did that come from? That didn't come from God. You know, the devil was probably saying, yeah, go ahead, keep, keep talking that talk. Keep saying those negative words. Keep being in doubt and unbelief. And the more I think about it, that's what he says to us too. Yeah, keep saying those negative words. Don't agree with God. Can you imagine the enemy saying, don't agree with God? I, you know, can you imagine that? Can you hear that? Don't agree with God's word. Don't confess the truth. You know, it's not going to come to pass anyhow. Don't agree with God. 
So you see that the difference here between agreement and disagreement with God's word, it's connected with our victory. Let me end with this. When we got born again, when you and I got born again, we entered into this land, this place we've never been before, the kingdom of God. We've never been there. We've never experienced what we're experiencing now. But it's a land full of spiritual giants. Amen? If, if your church don't preach that, you'll hear it here. This land is full of spiritual giants. But we have a king. Amen? Amen. We have a king. Amen? We have a king that's greater than any spiritual giant that's alive. We have a kingdom that we have entered into that has no equal. Amen? The kingdom of God has no equal. And if we don't stand, if we don't stand and, and not waver at the giants, God has promised us the victory, hasn't he? God has promised us the victory. And what's one way to get the victory? Is to confess and stand fast. Stand fast, amen? It doesn't matter what things look like. It doesn't matter what, what, thing, what happens. We have to hold on to hope. We have to hold on to Jesus, our King. Amen? Amen. But our King is greater than anything that can come up in our life. Amen? We are more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you for victory. It doesn't matter what circumstances look like. It doesn't matter um, what people say other people's opinions. Father, your word is the only opinion that we need. Father, help us by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Help us to stand fast and hold on to the hope. Hold on to faith. Hold on to Jesus. Because he who promised is faithful. And we'll thank you for it, give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor for it, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.